getting a good start in life, well, I have a couple of stories to tell you today. And it first started off with a school I went to in Drogheda, and it was called the Lawrence's School. And it was a very industrialised school where we went in and did woodwork, technology, metalwork, science, art, and all the things that I felt at home with. And as soon as I walked in the doors and seen the list of subjects that I had and that I was able to do, I felt at home. I was quite fidgety as a child. They probably call it ADHD. There was no name on it when I was there. I liked making things. I felt at home when I was making things. And I had found my path. I had a lovely teacher called Martin Murray, and he taught me woodwork. And I went through his class up until third year, and I did my junior cert, and I got an A in the woodwork. And I felt this was my path, and I felt at home in the woodwork. I went on into fifth year, and after about a month, I decided that this wasn't for me. I felt like I wanted to go out and work, and I felt I was armed enough to go and work. Because all through my um, schooling years, from maybe sixth class, I always worked in the summer holidays and sold strawberries on the side of the road. I always remember my mother going up um, to do the ladies' mini marathon years ago. And she said, oh my God, that's my Margaret on the side of the road. I was selling strawberries. I was a, ter <laughs> I was a terribly confident child. I, had a, I, I just had a, a drive. It was, it was very strange. When I was younger, I was always daydreaming. And I think what I was doing was, I was molding in what I was going to do when I, got, when I was older. So by the time of the age of 15, I said, no, that's it, I'm going to go out and work. And that's exactly what I did. I went and knocked on a few doors, and I got into Alpine Furnitures. And Ken Healy was there, and he had 24 staff at the time. It was a pine factory, and it was very, very popular pine furniture in 97. And he was fantastic because he said to me one day, he said, Margaret, write down where you want to be in five years' time. And I actually found a piece of paper there a couple of weeks ago my husband gave to me. And I had on it like 16 plus 5 is 21. <laughs> when in five years' time, I would love to be one of the top people in my trade. I'd love to be very successful and to be well known in my trade. And I also wrote in it, I'd love to know all the tricks of the trade. <laughs> Whatever that meant at the time, I wanted to know everything about my trade. So I used to go into Ken every day and I'd say to Ken, Ken, look, will you give me an apprenticeship? And he'd say, Margaret, if I give you one, I'm going to have to give 24 people one as well. And I said, look, I won't tell them, just give it to me. And he said, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll do up a CV, and it was a one-pager. And I went off on my bicycle while I was working for him, and on the weekends, I called into several companies around Drogheda. I found one company in Bewley Wood in Termenfecken on the east coast of Ireland. And I remember cycling up to the entrance, and his father was at the door having a, 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 a cigarette, and there was a dog, a dog beside him, and I said, this place looks great. <laughs> Very family home. And I was right. I went inside, and his mother was there, and I said, look, Mrs. Boylan, I have my CV here. And will you please give this to uh, Desi and let him know that I'm after cycling seven kilometers out here. And I have no problem cycling out here every single day. So a week later, my boss came into the workshop and he had a big smile on his face. He said, you're not going to believe it. He said, Ken's going to take you on. He's going to give you an apprenticeship. That was my start in life. Ken had introduced me to a man called Peter Bork that was from Foss and he had told me about the apprenticeships. He came down with a big grey folder, so I was armed with that because I believed I had the apprenticeship. All I needed was the sponsor. And I was armed with £2,800 at the time, which was a buzzery to tuck on females if you took on an apprentice in your company. I excelled in my trade with, with Desi. I got picked to do the World Skills competition. I didn't get through to it, but I got nominated to enter it. I went on then to work in several multinational companies around Ireland, and in Navin, and Dublin, and in Dock. And one of them in particular, I would have travelled the whole country doing sales and cold calling and that. So I found a love of sales and engaging with people, and always listened to how stories, how people had set up in business. 
I had a client list of 280 customers around the whole of Ireland, and I'd still be friends with a lot of them today. I went on to work in a big multinational company in Dublin, and I was um, pregnant at the time. And I was only about 25 at the time, and I had met my husband as well. And I remember going in, and I was expecting time. Now, he was trying to get me to go and work for him for a long time, and I said, look, I have somebody in my handbag this time. And he was looking at me and going, what is she talking about? And I said, I'm actually expecting a baby. And he said, that's no problem. I said, I'll be able to be here for six months. I said, but I promise you, I'll work from home and I'll do whatever it takes. I'll be back. And he did just that and he took me on. And I saved the company an awful lot of money. I generated business within the company in the trade sector. And he was very, very happy. I was there for three and a half years and I came back from holidays one year, it was in 2009, and I realized the country was at its knees and we were going into a recession. And I was going to lose my job. And a month or two later, I found out my husband, he worked for the, he was a civil engineer and he was going to lose his job as well in that November. So I got on the phone and I rang him, I said, oh, I was in tears, I was very upset, like, and I said, I'm going to lose my job, what are we going to do? Like, this was in February. And he said to me, he goes, Margaret, he said, you're the first person in there every day. And you're the last person leaving. He said, you're going to open your own company. And I remember thinking, God, is he mad like, do you know? So I started, I started perking up in the car and I was like, do you know what? You're absolutely right. We're going to do this. So in 2009, in March, I went looking for a premises. And I found a 5,000 square foot factory from a guy that I knew that worked in joinery, and I asked him, could I rent a part of his space? And he said, Margaret, he said, I'll give you something even better. I have a 5,000 square foot factory available. So we went over there, he opened the doors. It was like walking into a time warp because there was all joinery stairs and all that there. But I remember feeling so excited, and I said to him, God, Michael, there's too much space here, it'll be too big. And he said, Margaret, I'm telling you now, he said, you'll never have enough of space. So we opened up a company, CTR Manufacturing, which was for cabinets, tops and robes for the trade nationwide. We were kind of thinking then, we spent a bit of month, our open day was the 18th of May. And we're kind of going, how are we going to let people know that we're here? By the grace of God and by the grace of luck, we were out in McPhail's in Drogheda celebrating the two weeks beforehand. We were after spending about two months clearing out the whole place and getting it all ready. And my sister was at home minding my two and a half year old at the time. And I remember getting a phone call from the joiner's son and he said, you're not going to believe, he said, your sister Amanda is after being picked to go on to winning streaks <laughs> show on RTE, he said, she's going to be a millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't believe this. I was so delighted for her. My sister was out of work from that December and she was coming to work for me in May. So RTE came down and did a whole plug-in of the factory. The paint was still wet on the sign, and our little delighted heads in us, in the factory, there was a forklift and a bale of cream sheets, no orders. <laughs> we went on to RT, and she did a whole spiel of what we were about and how we, had st how we were setting up. When we opened the doors on the 18th of May, the phone never stopped ringing. We were inundated with orders from the trade, from family, from friends. With about our order boards were full for the next three months. We went on and developed the company. I had eight staff at the time. We built it up to eight staff. And in 2010, 11 and 12, it wasn't too bad. The country kind of went a bit strange then again. A lot of people emigrated and a lot of my customers emigrated. And we had to diversify the company. I opened up a company called Grand Designs in another premises. And how I found that premises was, I was driving home one day and my husband said, Margaret, we need to diversify the company. Another great idea he had. We should open up a retail sector. You're doing a few privates now, he said, and people like to come in and see things and feel them. And I said, you're absolutely right. We had no money to do it. And we certainly like, had no premises. So I drove by Brookville in Drogheda and there was a guy that was selling flooring, connect flooring, and he was there 10 years. And I seen that he was doing up the whole shop front. And I drove in, I said, Colin, how's it going? I said, we're from the same street. I don't know whether he remembered me or not. Like. And he said, um, how are you doing? I said, look, you're doing a lot of work in here. The place looks great. 
I said, um, you're after opening up another part of the room. What are you doing with it? And he goes, I'll probably put a load of stock there. I said, how about putting some kitchens and bedroom furniture in there? I said, oh, no, Mark. He said, I'm not interested. I have a shop in Drogheda, he said. If you want to take that one over, he said, and uh, you can do that. I said, no, no, I'm not interested in that. I said, look, don't say yes or no yet. Think about this. If we share half the rent and rates, I said, and if somebody comes in to buy a wardrobe, they're going to leave it the floor. And he goes, right. So I went off, and the next day he phoned me, and he said, I'm going to take you up in your offer. So I went in there, and I spent three years with him and his wife, and they were lovely, and it worked out great, because if he had to tip downtown to do the bank, I'd sell a floor for him, and likewise. And during that time, I had another child. And it seemed to me that every time I had a great idea, I had another child. <laughs> So there he was, with this, the, in this the, he was the third child. And my father used to say, the child that was riding the car. Because my husband had emigrated at the time, in 2013, to get work. He was an engineer. And I stayed at home, and I worked as well. And this little baby came to work with me for a whole nine months. And he was great. He was the best child ever. I used to say to people, when I go out and do a measure, look, I hope you don't mind, I've got a baby to come with me. And they'd say, bring the baby, it's grand, you know? And then when you get to the house, myself and Mary would be talking, and John would come in and say, I'll take that baby, and you can talk about kitchens. <laughs> so it was very, very good, like... So, like, I mean, if you look at it, like, the people had given you starts in life. It happened with the school teacher. He saw something in me and, and lit that spark and showed me the way, like... And then, when I left there and I went into Ken's, and he saw a spark in me, out of all the 24 people that were there. And he helped me as well. And then going through the apprenticeship system with Desi, he saw something in me and kept me on and gave me my apprenticeship and helped me excel in my trade and taught me all the skills that I needed. And they weren't just practical skills, they were life skills. Because we used to call into people's houses and you'd see how people lived. And like, it was hilarious because you'd have like, the very top end, the middle end, and the low end market. And it was excellent life skills I learned. So you knew how to talk to people and to treat people with respect. And most importantly, treat them like rock stars. Only in my own company, I never did business at school. I learned it from all my peers through my journey and on the pathway to success. I can safely say I had an opportunity last year the premises came up, I convinced the bank to give me the money, and they did. Although I sold the story three or four times because the managers kept changing. <coughs> In the end, they listened. They gave it to me. And it was the best thing I ever did. Because we only opened in 2009, we're in our seventh year in business, and the company completely changed its diversity last year. The location was excellent. We managed to build up the staff. We have seven staff now. And I also have another seven subcontractors that we give work to, and they give work to us. So it's a whole team effort, and it's about looking after each other. But I definitely believe that people deserve a start in life. We're on our fourth apprentice, and the last apprentice that we took on is the nephew of the guy that helped me get my apprenticeship. Now, that's good karma. We also took on redundant apprentices through the LME TV in the Regional Skills Training Centre over the course of the seven years that we did when we opened up in business. And the first man I met was Pat Rogan. And he passed away last Christmas. But he saw something in me as well, and he helped me. And he nominated me to be an ambassador, a goodwill ambassador for the Regional Skills Centre. I was so emotional when he rang me that day, I was crying on the phone. But what I can safely say is, if there's somebody in your employment or your staff, upskill them. Home grow your own. That's what I'm doing now. I'm finding it very difficult to find skilled people. So I'm taking the initiative and I'm home growing people. I'm giving people the opportunity to become excellent in their trades. And I hope that you can all that, do that too. And uh, that's my story. Thank you.